digitalization. What I use is a modified pendulum that we published in the JCO in 2003 with four removable springs. First, we distalize the second molar. Then we distalize the first molar. And then using sectional wires and the micro implants to maintain the anchorage, we distalize the bicuspids and the other teeth. This is very important because distalization is very easy, but maintain the position of the molar after the distalization is very difficult, so micro implant works very well. So this is the complete protocol that we use. And this is a case with the first class in the right side and second class in the left side. Initial records. And I take out this wisdom teeth, the upper left. And then we have the pendulum with tubes and removable springs. This is activate the first and then activate the second spring for the first molar, making the distalization of the both. And as the springs are removable, we can control everything. And also we can check the inclination of the molars with X-rays and correct this position. To activate this spring, we activate following the dental line. This is distalization. To avoid the mesial rotation of the molar, we include towing. To avoid the inclination of distal inclination of the crown, we do reverse tip back and also to avoid the clockwise rotation of the mandible, we active intrusion. So after the distalization of the molar, we insert a micro implant measurely to the molar. Anesthesia and mucosa measurement, using the scalpel to separate the soft tissues, and then inserting the micro implant. X-ray control, and then using a sectional wire and elastic change, we distalize the bicuspids and then complete the case. As you can see, near to the end of treatment, I'm finishing the case. At the end of the treatment, with a good inclination of the molar, final records, superimposition of the cephalometric tracing. And then what we can do now is to reinforce the anchorage of the pendulum by making two holes in the pendulum and inserting micro implant through these holes. In this way, we can avoid completely the possible protrusion of the incisors. Then, we distalize first the second molar. Then we distalize the first molar. And then, maintaining the pendulum, we can distalize the second bicuspid 
and also the first right cuspid. And we can maintain these springs, these blue springs, to retract the incisors with the eight figure ligature from cuspid to cuspid. So this is a case of a second class, but also with impacted cuspid, upper left impacted cuspid, here, and then we can bond the brackets, we can open the, cr the crown of the cuspid, and then bond a pendulum and insert the microimplant through the acrylic part of the pendulum, beginning with the latch lock driver and finishing with a thumb wheel in both sides. Here we have the impacted cuspid and also all the wires of the pendulum and also the microimplant. And here is the progress of treatment. Pendulum reinforced with microimplant. Opening the space for the cuspid by distalizing the morals in the left side. And also with the same appliance we make a loop we make a loop here to pull the impacted cuspid. So you can do a lot of work with a resin plate fixed to the palatal area with two microimplants. And we can see distalization and also the movement of the upper cuspid. Also for we can use a micro implant with a sliding tube, distalizing cold spring. and a wire ligature. And this is the way. We insert a microimplant, especially in the area of the alveolar zygomatic crest and between the root of the teeth, but as parallel as we can in order to facilitate the molar movement to distal direction. These are the coil springs, and this is a sliding tube. It is not welded to the wire. But now what we use is a tube with a long hook to avoid the intrusion of the uh, bicuspids. This is a case with first class in the right side and second class in the left side. So, brackets, the slide into the coil spring and inserted, inserting the microimplant, anesthesia and mucosa signals measure. Here is the separate, separation of the soft tissues with the scalpel and insertion of the microimplant. Parallel, parallel to the root and not in between the root. And then we active the coil spring by using a wire ligature from the sliding tube to the microimplant.
And this is the progress of treatment. You can see the spaces here. You can see the spaces here. But now we use a tube with a long a tube with a long hook to avoid this intrusion. In this case, I had to use intermaxillary elastic to avoid the intrusion of this teeth. Spaces opening because of the distalization. Progress of the treatment. Correcting the midline. But these elastics are to control this intrusion. Progress of the treatment. And close to the end of the treatment again. And now finishing the case. One year later. Also, we can distalize molars directly from the microimplant, as shown in this example, in this scan. And this is a case with deviation of the midline, crowding and rotation, and not enough anchorage for the distalization. This molar don't offer enough anchorage for this distalization. That's the reason why I inserted one microimplant in this area, disinfection, anesthesia, mucosa sickness measurement, separation of the soft tissues with the scalpel, and insertion with a ratchet and with the sound wheel. Checking the stability of the microimplant and the microimplant seems to be inside the sinus but it is more labially positioned. So with a wire ligature we can distalize the both by cuspid at the same time, and with differential forces, we can also correct the rotation. So, progress of the treatment. treatment. And here we are close to finish the alignment and the rotation control of the teeth without protrusion and correcting also the midline. So we went from here to here, very, very easy, only with the support of a microimplant. X-ray control, control, and now you can see here alignment and leveling as well as midline correction. Before and after in the upper jaw, but finishing the treatment in the lower.